Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. Today we have a special episode of tips and tricks for you. I'm looking back at everything that's happened in the world of DJ technology during 2016. Let's get to it. In industry terms, there's no question what the biggest news was of 2016, and that was the sale of Rain to In Music, owner of brands like Newmark, Akai and Denon DJ. This came as a shock and, to be frank, a disappointment to many DJs, who had developed huge loyalty to the American-made brand over the years. They were a company which was still putting out great new products, like the MP2014 we reviewed back in March, and to see a great many talented employees lose their jobs is always a shame. However, In Music clearly didn't buy the brand on a whim. They have big plans for Rain moving forward, and I'm excited to see what they bring to the table in 2017. Looking at the other brands in the In Music stable, Newmark have had a solid year with new kit like the Dashboard and updates to popular controllers like the NV and the Mixtrack Pro. But it's Denon DJ which has seen the biggest shakeup, with the MCX 8000 perhaps offering the clearest hints about their future direction. A full-size, full-featured controller for Serato DJ, the 8000 also features standalone playback for music prepped with Denon's own engine software. As I said in my review of the 8000, they will need a bigger range of standalone gear to compete with Pioneer in club booths, and from what they've been teasing, 2017 will be the year that comes along. Interestingly, the Denon DJ product I was most excited about from their display at the NAMM show a whole year ago, the VL12 turntable, still hasn't hit the shelves. This may be a good sign that the company are going in hard on engineering something really special, but still kind of frustrating for turntable lovers. Fingers crossed a release is around the corner now. So we move on to Pioneer DJ, and once again they've been going hell for leather in 2016. The big release at the start of the year was the Nexus 2 range of kit, which was a solid, if not exactly groundbreaking, update to their pro-level gear. This was followed by the slightly bizarre but seriously impressive CDJ and DJM Tour system, the Pioneer DJ philosophy pushed to the nth degree. Most people will never get to play on it, but I suspect those who do will have a blast. As the year went on, new Pioneer DJ stuff kept on coming thick and fast. We just reviewed the XDJ1000 Mark IIs, the Terize SP6 sampler and DDJ RZX are both in the lab on review right now, but the real story wasn't so much the hardware as the software behind it all. Following the introduction of the Performance Pack in 2015, Record Box DJ has come on leaps and bounds in 2016 with seriously enhanced HID, DVS control and now Video 2. It is now posing a serious challenge for the other two big platforms, Serato DJ and Traktor, and it looked like perhaps Pioneer DJ and Serato weren't getting along too well, but with new HID compatibility and a new dedicated Serato DJ controller, the DDJ SZ2 hitting the market at the end of 2016, it looks like fears of a total divorce were unfounded. Speaking of Serato, the New Zealand company have continued to refine and expand their Serato DJ platform all year long. They were the first to include support for the Pulse Locker streaming platform, which the jury is kind of still out on, but they've also gone straight in on Ableton Link, they revised the SP6 sampler and added support for Sound Switch, allowing DJs to control light shows directly with their mixing, the potential of which I remain hugely excited about. Serato also partnered with Roland for their entry to the DJ market this year, and their DJ808 controller will be reviewed on here very soon. Tractor from Native Instruments had a rather quiet year, almost silent really, until they came back loud and clear with version 2.11 in October. That brought the Ableton Live integration to their platform too, and a killer new feature with step sequencing for the remix decks. The world is still waiting for that almost mythical Tractor Pro 3, but if they keep dropping bombshells like that in the meantime, I'm happy to remain patient. Some other products of note in 2016 are the Mixars Duo. This was a tough release, being the first high-profile product from a brand new manufacturer, but they pulled it off really well, and Mixars are certainly a company to watch next year. I must also mention Reloop with a bunch of solid kit like the Mix Tour and the Mix On 4, which we'll be reviewing shortly. They've proved themselves to be reliable performers time after time. Both of those work with Algorithm's DJ software on iOS, which continues to gain plaudits, 
but doesn't seem to be getting a ton of adoption in booths. The mobile space is a really interesting one, but with Apple seemingly abandoning professionals on all their platforms, it's an open question as to whether mobile will ever be a true force in club DJing. And finally, Allen and Heath released their most accessible club standard mixer for a long time, the Zone PX5, which we reviewed a few weeks ago and I was seriously impressed by. To wrap up, I'm going to nominate my new product of the year and regular viewers will not be surprised to hear that it's portableism related. Yes, it's the Newmark PT-01 Scratch. Portableism was not birthed in 2016, but this was the year it really blew up. There are new seven inch scratch records dropping constantly and a whole bunch of related products showing up all the time. And whilst a massive amount of credit must always go to the armies of customizers and small manufacturers pushing the limits of what a mini turntable can do, Newmark must get props for releasing the first truly mainstream portableist product in the PT-01 Scratch. It doesn't detract from any of the work people on the scene are doing, but it allows DJs who are curious about portableism to dip a toe into the waters without blowing a bunch of cash and serves as a perfect introduction for them. In my opinion, it is the most exciting product of 2016 by a long, long way. So there you go, my look at everything that's happened in the world of DJ technology during 2016. I need to say at this point, a massive thank you to everyone who's watched even one of our videos over the course of the last year, and a massive shout out to all the DJ City team around the world for enabling me to produce this content and bring it to you. Now, from what I've seen, 2017 is already shaping up to be a very interesting year in the world of DJ technology. There's gonna be lots more to talk about as the months move forward. So do make sure you are subscribed for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. And I'll see you soon.